Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cbrev. Welcome to another episode of What Would Brev Do? This is the series where I play an entire ranked game and I talk about what's going on in my head the entire time. Today's team build, I thought it would be fun to do the 15k and under squad from my tier list video that I posted yesterday. So this is the best team you can have, according to my opinion, uh, if every card in your lineup rotation and bullpen costs 15,000 stubs or less individually. So I thought that would be fun. A couple of quick notes. I am playing JD in left field and Jordan in right field. This is opposite of what I recommended in the tier list video, and that's just because I do have JD at parallel three, which gives him gold fielding and left. So I thought that was worth uh, having them opposite. Additionally, I mentioned in the video, instead of judge in center field, you can run Dominguez. Um, they are right next to each other on my outfield tier list rankings. Dominguez is better defensively in my opinion, because of the speed in center field, um, and also hits lefties better, which is an important part to note that this lineup four through six is all worse versus lefties. It's the weak spot. So slapping Dominguez fifth would solve that problem and would also give you uh, better defense in center field, but obviously it would make you a lot worse versus right-handed pitching. Uh, on the bench, we got Martin Machado, Ramirez, Schwarber, and Seeger. And our rotation looks like Corbin, Castillo, Valenzuela, Miller, and Brash. I am going to put uh, Alcantara in for Miller just so he gets energy, but uh, Alcantara obviously costs more than 15K. I did just record one of these videos, pitching with Valenzuela. Uh, he rage quit in the third inning, and nothing really happened, so we're just going to go ahead and re-record and shoot from the hip this game as well. Our bullpen is five righties, three lefties. It is Chad Green, Yohan Duran. Uh, Goose Gossage, Devin Williams, and Jorge Lopez for our righties, and our lefties are Soto, Chapman, and Mantiply. So, bit of a longer intro for a What Would Brev Do video, but I wanted to kind of break down the squad that we broke down in the tier list video. Again, that's in the description if you missed it, and uh, it will be fun to actually use the team. I've been having tons of fun with Ellie on the alt account. Uh, he also hit a leadoff home run last game, so... <laughs> We'll see if he can do it again. He's been playing really, really well for me. So this should be fun. We're at 784 rating. The season just turned over a couple days ago. And uh, facing Paul Blackburn was not on my radar. You can't see because of my webcam. But this is a parallel three Paul Blackburn we're going to be hitting against. So our four through six in the lineup is going to be feasting probably. They're all worse against lefties but better against righties. I keep queuing into weird pitchers, man. <laughs> I guess last game I faced Sandy, but the game didn't last very long. All right, we're going to be using Burns. And Burns is kind of in the same boat as Sandy was, if you watched the video where I pitched with Sandy Alcantara. Um, it's very easy to get into a pattern of uh, cutter's glove side and sinker's arm side with guys like Burns. Some of the easiest Burns Pitchers I've hit against, that's all they do. Cutters, glove side, sinkers, arm side. It becomes very predictable, very easy to hit. So we want to try to stay ahead of our opponent in that sense and not just spam those types of pitches like front door cutters to righties, you know, arm side cutters, glove side sinkers is the next step to variety. And then incorporating the sliders and change ups very good as well. That being said, though, if you do queue into a guy who you just feel like isn't handling the outlier sinker well, it is absolutely warranted to just spam that, especially right on right, if you feel like they can't hit it. I don't know where this guy's timing's at, uh, but it was pretty good on that pitch. Again, sinker in. Not the best pitch to be spamming if you feel like your opponent can hit it. And he just showed us that he will, so we will try to be a bit more cute now. Ortiz at the dish. Let's try a sinker arm side. Maybe we get a cheap double play here. He's been pretty patient. And he just took a lead at first, so I'm actually going to slide step this. Yeah, he pretty much told me he was stealing. You'll slide step change up. Uh, I didn't throw the ball fast enough, though. <laughs> I was trying to run with my guy, and it wouldn't let me run. That was so frustrating. He could definitely, like, stop and then run back to second base, so I didn't want to just throw to first right away. I was trying to get in a rundown, and my guy wouldn't run. So he should have been hosed there. Uh, but long story short, he pretty much told me he was stealing because first pitch, he didn't take a step, and then second pitch, as soon as I selected my pitch... 
you know, Burns, when you pick a pitch, he brings the ball up to the glove. Uh, he took a lead, so dead giveaway. Try to be conscious of what your opponent's doing on the base pass. To a degree, you don't want to do it to a fault. Stealing's bad enough on this game that even if they get a good jump, sometimes you can throw them out anyway. But when they do stuff that's obvious like that, it's important to at least slide step for one pitch to see if you can get a freebie. Alright, I have yet to hit against Paul Blackburn in an online game that wasn't events. So we'll see how this goes. Pretty standard pitch mix, just throws them a lot slower than other people do. So I imagine we won't have too much trouble. Uh, but pretty standard sinker cutter guy. So we will. I wonder if he falls into the same patterns that someone like Burns would. We'll see what he throws. Don't really know what I'm looking for here, just trying to pick up on some tendencies. Little backdoor cutter there, and that's an absolute dot, and I just wasn't fooled at all. <laughs> Maybe Ellie is just that good, but uh, that's a good start to the game for us, because that's about as good of a pitch you can throw 2-2, and we had no issues. Our lineup is very, very good against right-handed pitching, too, almost to a fault. Like, if we queued into Randy with this lineup, it might be not a good time. But it's going to bode well for us in this one, probably. All right, he definitely doesn't have to throw us a strike here. First base open, Devers kind of scary. A little pinpoint strike there. Good pitch from him. Still could throw us a ball. And he did. Oh, no, it did catch the corner. I'm glad I swung then. I thought that was a ball. Uh, we move the runner over there. Pretty good swing, honestly. We'll see if he autopilots his sinker in on the hands here. We can get a two-run bomb. He did go change up. Good mix up. Kind of nibbling after we had that leadoff double. He's checking to see who's on deck here. And or warming somebody up. Depends on how bad he wants to win this game. With Jordan on deck, I would imagine he probably doesn't want to walk me if he can help it. So we'll probably look to be aggressive here. 3-1. Wish I was a little bit earlier there. Regardless, it'll score a run. If I would have turned on that a bit better, could have been 2 nothing, but... Good to be aggressive there. Even a ground ball is uh, a run there with the 90 speed at third. And, again, the fact that he checked to see who my on-deck hitter was kind of pretty much told me how he's going to pitch to me uh, with some basic logic as to what I would think if I saw Jordan on deck. This is a concept we talked about either last episode or the episode before that. You can get a lot of information from somebody just pausing. Um... If you know, like, the reasons behind it. So long story short, he wasn't going to walk JD there. So well, we wanted to try to put the ball in play 3-1 when we were most likely going to get a good pitch to hit. He's hung two off-speed pitches to us. This at bat. We go ahead and take that one with Jordan. Probably didn't want to walk us there either. Uh, the, the giveaway for that kind of was the 2-0 curveball right down the middle that some of you guys were probably screaming at your screen that I didn't swing at. <laughs> But I didn't miss it twice. We we're off to a hot start against Paul Blackburn. Pretty easy take there. Yeah, this card stuff is just... I don't know. Maybe it'll be different on Legend, but... Right now, I could not be less fooled. Like I said, he literally just throws the same pitch as everyone else throws, but like... As I strike out looking, that was a dot. Okay, I should shut up now, probably. Uh, but he throws the same pitches as, ev as everyone else, but way slower. It's like, I don't know. Card doesn't strike me as very good, but maybe some of you guys are having success. Usually when people have kind of a down inning or a inning where they kind of lose a bit of momentum, they come out firing. So big props to this guy taking the first two pitches at this inning. Trying to stay in his own, I suppose. Uh, but that's the reason I was kind of pitching off the plate right away, especially with Jordan up. If I can just get him to swing at a ball first pitch and roll it over or something. Uh, I'm actually going to throw a cutter up and away since he kind of indicated that that's a pitch he likes. So this is a pretty niche concept, honestly. I don't use it too often, but if you remember from the first at-bat with him pitching and me hitting, um, 
when he got to two strikes versus a lefty, he went up and away cutter, and it was an absolute dot. And luckily, we were able to put it in the opposite field gap. Uh, that's not a very common pitch. Most of the time, I would say, it's kind of a niche pitch. So the fact that he chose that pitch for the first at bat of the game tells me in a way that he thinks it's a really hard pitch to hit. So we kind of come give him a taste of his own medicine the next inning. And uh, ended up working out, catching him looking. We may try to feature that pitch more too since he has shown he doesn't he didn't do too well against it the first time he threw it as well. All right, I was just about to say, we are not going to let him keep throwing pitches down the middle first pitch, so this is the inning where we probably get a little bit more aggressive. That was a pretty good swing, and unfortunately we get dove on. Could have moved the PCI a little bit farther out, but what can you do? And immediately as a result of that, even though we made an out, we've already changed up how he wants to pitch, at least in this at bat. So this is why it's important to stay on top of how your opponent is wanting to attack you and if they're making adjustments, right? A lot of last inning, he was just hosing us stuff down the middle, even first pitch of the at-bat. So all it takes is one swing from Ortiz. We didn't even do any damage. Um, and immediately we get two first pitch. First two pitches are balls the next at-bat. Okay, I'm getting dotted away. <laughs> Maybe Blackburn has the control. Maybe that's what's going for him. So an adjustment we need to make now is being more aggressive, swinging the bat with two strikes. If I'm not fooled too much, like I've been saying I haven't been this uh, game, then I shouldn't be too prone to chasing, so I might as well swing away two strikes and not keep getting struck out looking. So that's what will change up. Nothing to hit so far this at bat. 3-1 here, pitcher on deck. Uh, taking a walk's fine. I get to turn the lineup over, but we'll see what he throws. Yeah, that's fine with me. Kind of a neutral result for both of us. We'll probably end up striking out here with Corbin and just go back to pitching. Probably take till two strikes here too, just to see some more pitches. And he just runs the sinker in on us. Good stuff. Back to work on the bump. So far, so good of this video potentially lasting longer than 15 minutes. <laughs> That's a product of us definitely not hitting as well as we could be. And that's a pitch I love with Corbin. So tunneling the sinker inside with the front door slider. I do this all the time with Sandy, too. It's even better with Sandy because Sandy's slider is thrown harder. Um... But, like, you can see how that sequence played out. It was sinker inside. He pulled it foul. Logically, I wouldn't throw a sinker inside again since he took that good of a swing at it. And so we throw the same tunnel but catch a front door slider on him, catch him looking. Again, trying to limit the amount that we are throwing uh, glove side cutters and arm side sinkers to really trying to mix it up a bit. This is... Easily the biggest mistake people make with Corbin. I see it all the time. Even when I'm hitting against Corbin, people just spamming. Cutter glove side, sinker arm side. Cutter glove side, sinker arm side. It's not good enough uh, against good players. So really try to mix it up in that sense. All right, Mike's on and we're recording. That's W. We'll see how he attacks a second time through the order now. So there's two points we're trying to make as we move through the second time of the order ourselves. Number one is not letting him get away with just throwing stuff right down the middle, especially when we're ahead in the count, count or first pitch, and also swinging more with two strikes as to not get caught looking since that's some of the most success he's had against us striking us out has been with us with the bat on our shoulder, so we will fix that. And that's an unfortunate product of changing the approach there. That was far enough inside where if I didn't suck, I would have been able to lay off pretty easily. But what can you do? Can't win them all. Definitely seems like he's nibbling a bit early in the count more than he was before. So the fact that we're taking pitches has turned out to be good. 
We swing 2-0 there, though, as part of our try to change in approach, try to not let him get away with bad pitches when we're ahead in the count. Didn't think he'd double up sinker there. That sucks. That was a very hittable pitch. And now we are not going to get caught looking. He's making great adjustments, honestly. He did, I don't know if he ran the cutter in on us at all before this inning, and he did it back-to-back -back at bats. Unfortunate. <laughs> the one t the second I start making adjustments, he makes the adjustment back. A bit unfortunate timing for us. Mm. Okay, Paul has limited us to two through three. That is a lot better than some pitchers have done recently, so <laughs> maybe I shouldn't be talking. Something to be said about having almost no reps versus a card, though, that's for sure. That was a terrible pitch. Luckily, he wasn't ready for the change. Try to change up inside in case he's sitting on the sinker. He pieced that up really well, so he was not sitting on the sinker or he was just late on it. That's unfortunate for him. Perfect swing into a line out. I think I want to try to get him to two strikes here and then go up and away cutter again. Uh, we'll throw a slider here first. Just get him thinking about it. Okay, that's fine. Now we'll throw the pitch that he showed us he loves. Beautiful. So that's gotten us two strikeouts, just that observation. Two of our six strikeouts have come from a pitch he told us by him pitching that he thinks it's really hard to hit. Good stuff. Always looking for information, man. Anything we can get. We can do the same thing with the cutter in on the hands versus the lefties, too. And he swung just like we did. This is good stuff, man. Just breaking everything down, looking for little nuggets. I think I may try to throw a sinker, like, here, just to tunnel it, make him think we're trying to catch him looking again. Yeah, nice. Ellie? Oh, that's too far in the hole. Dang, that was a good pitch and a bad swing from him, but he's able to reach... And this is kind of a scary at bat now. We definitely don't want Jordan to tie this game up. That would be unfortunate. Okay, he was not fooled by that at all. You'll notice when I go up and in with the cutter, though, I'm throwing it a bit below the corner. I do that in case they jam their PCI up to the corner. They swing over the top of it. It's a bit harder of a pitch to square up than just trying to paint them. Uh, I'm going to mound visit here for confidence since this is a big spot. And I do think I am going to challenge him at least once inside because we haven't thrown it a lot. And he was somehow still sitting on it. So good thing he pulled that foul. Good thing we got it in off the plate. This is going to be a good at bat for us to try to feature that front door slider again. Let's go outside change up first. We're trying to catch our second strike somewhere. So then we can throw this front door slider. Nice. He ended up swinging late at that pitch. That was a change-up tunnel we've been featuring that we ended up throwing a sinker. So, again, glove side sinker, not a pitch, you know, when you're autopiling with Corbin, you don't throw it too often. But it's a good mix-up from the standard cutter sinker placements. All right. I think we want to turn up the heat here offensively and be a bit more aggressive this inning. Just missed there. Uh, I don't want him to keep getting away with, you know, if you throw in us hittable pitches early, I want to hit him. And also, we didn't hit too well with two strikes last inning. So I think we're going to try to prevent that from happening. Honestly, both those swings were, we just took were not that bad. Just a little bit over the top and a little bit early on both of them. But it's fine. We've got the pitch count up high enough already where we can kind of Go to town this inning and see if we can do some quick damage, but we did not, unfortunately. Good pitch. 
expecting performance wise yeah but great pitchers like this you him. may get one opportunity in one inning to get to him to get some runs up on the board and if you don't take it then you may see zero oh, the rest of the ball man I will say he's been all over the corners hitting against this Paul Blackburn has been an experience <laughs> I don't feel like I've been fooled a single time aside from like when we've been striking out looking I suppose yet I only have two hits maybe I've been fooled who knows does he want a pinch hit here is the question I suppose it depends on if he gets anybody on base All right, we're going to sink her up and out again. Try to make it look like the cutter. I wanted that off the plate, and it definitely was not. Corbin giving up the first run of the game. All of a sudden, it's a one-run game. That was a bit unlucky with the pitch placement, honestly. Definitely wanted that off the plate for sure. Hmm. That sucks, too, because... The closer the score gets, the least likely he's able to pinch hit, or he wants to pinch hit this inning. And with how I've been hitting, honestly, I'd be cool with him taking Blackburn out. <laughs> Never thought I'd say that when this game started. He's going to leave him in. This is probably right, probably the right call now that it's a one-run game, and this dude's just owning my life, I guess. Oh, Blackburn in the gap for a double. You have to be joking. <laughs> There's no shot. Three contact, three power. Brian Reynolds. Here's a high chopper. Maybe I need to throw more balls against this guy. Seems like he's being more aggressive now, too. That's not where I wanted that pitch. Corbin, figure it out, bud. That could have been really bad. I'm happy he swung over the top of that. We are never, ever throwing a sinker in here. Not a single time. We will take our out, hopefully, if Jordan gets there and get out of here, just giving up the one home run. And as we move towards the bottom of our order here, it's interesting to think about if we should pinch it. Hmm. We are not hitting well. All right, our goal is to not get caught looking, so that's our goal. That's what we're doing. We're swinging if it's close. Yeah, the pitch. Now like this. That wasn't too close. Easy take. Dang. I feel like I hit that super weakly for where my PCI was. That could have definitely been an oppo bomb. I'm going to get the bullpen warm just in case Jimenez gets on base here. It's probably worth pinch hitting. Alright. Couple easy takes. See if he hoses us another one 2-0. He's thrown a lot of hittable pitches in this count. Staying away from us there, though. 3-0 I do think I am going to take. I don't think I've got to 3-0 much. 3-1 again looking for hittable stuff like hanging curves. That's a perfect pitch. And we are not going to get caught looking. And we chase the same pitch again. Jimenez. Lucky swing, not going to lie. I don't know how to not get caught looking while also staying off that pitch. And every time I tell myself not to get caught looking, he's thrown that pitch to a lefty. I should not have hit a home run there. But it does allow us to leave Burns in. Feel a bit more comfortable. Kind of letting this inning skid to a halt with Corbin hitting. Now that we have a two-run lead and nobody on base. If Jimenez hit a double or something, we were definitely pinch hitting. Maybe Corbin can hit a double for us. That's a funny joke. <laughs> I needed three power instead of zero. Good arm side run to that same side hitter right there. Very difficult to put that ball in the air or get 
It's pretty debatable if I should have even still pinch hit there. If this game was like 7 to 5 instead of 3 to 1, I think it's a bit more valid to pinch hit. But at the end of the day, he has only scored one off Burns. Although the swings he's been taking have been a lot better in the recent innings. All right, 2-1. Again, looking for cookies. It's an amazing pitch. Does he go up and out with the cutter again? <laughs> we'll see what he throws. He'll probably go in with the cutter again, right? Up and away change. Look at that dot. This dude is throwing the most pinpoint pitches of all time. That was still a good swing. Just over the top again. If you're wondering why my Burns ERA is so high, it's because events are events. I think he's only thrown like two innings, too, or something. It started this game at like 12-5, and it's already down to eight, so... <laughs> You can see how many innings I don't have on this account with him. Alright, we'll try this pitch one more time. This is maybe overthrowing it at this point. It caught too much of the plate, too. The last ones I've thrown were better pitches. But definitely probably overthrew that. Good on him, though. He made the adjustment, made the hit. We had to at least see it from him. Can't really tell what he's trying to hit. Down and in to lefties has seemed like about the only spot he really just wants nothing to do with. So let's spam it for a bit. I need that to get foul, please. Thank you. Alright, let's go cut her in on the hands versus the lefties. Again, this is a pitch he loves, so in theory he would swing at it. Let's try a slider instead. A bit loopier, more break. Great discipline from him here. He is having a really good inning. Woo! A little bit early there. We went slider instead of cutter, and he was actually ready for it. Maybe we go cutter down and away next time. This is a scary part of the lineup to pitch to, too, man. I don't know what it is if people are want running more switch hitters or what, but I feel like I keep getting in these games where I'm throwing like a righty on the mound and like every single at bats for somebody hitting from the left side. <laughs> it's uh, it makes it a lot harder to pitch for sure. Okay, so is he just abandoning the inside half? I'm not really sure what he's doing. He's so patient on pitches that he typically was not earlier. Maybe he's just eliminated that tunnel. Got him swinging early there. Nice. Castellanos here. Last time he was sitting sinker in really hard, so let's try slider first pitch. Nice. Steal a strike. Run the cutter off. Please don't bloop a single. Nice. And I think we'll go back to the sinker down and away. If you remember last Castellanos at bat, he popped this pitch up. He was late on it again, so that's what we want to see. Uh, I'm going to bury a change up since it's 0-2. We have a freebie. Might as well see if he swings. Good take. Uh, we'll run the sinker in way off the plate, hopefully. Good take. And now we want to tunnel that front door slider for hopefully the finishing move of this combo. And he was ready for it. This dude is hitting out of his mind this inning. I gotta tell it. I gotta tip my cap. I'm manipulating the pitches every which way and not really missing my spots. And he has just been all over me. Get there, Wilson. We get a freebie there, though. I was throwing a lot of first pitch down and in sinkers to lefties there, so we ended up going cutter off the plate instead and ended up getting a good contact out there. We're getting out hit seven to three, but it looks like he may move make a move away from Blackburn here, and he's going to Alvarado. I haven't hit against Alvarado in a hot minute too. Alvarado not in the best spot for sure. 
since Hater just got the changes that he got. <laughs> getting all the reps I've been getting against Hater, and then seeing Alvarado, who has like the same pitch mix but no change up, no change up, right? Yeah. Probably gonna be a lot easier to hit against. I am gonna take here three one. Just trying to get my feet wet this inning against Jose. Nice slider. We're just underneath it. Can the quirks carry it out? No. Warning track. Good swing. We've had a lot of swings with good timing, just early timing, where our PCI is literally just off the ball. Kind of frustrating. Saw that slider the whole way and just couldn't get in the right spot. Don't want any part of that pitch, 2 0. Oh, good stuff. He's made really competitive pitches when he's behind in the count, too. Another swing that was pretty good that I think we're out on. All right, JD fast enough. And this is a huge at bat. We really need to take advantage of this spot here. I'm going to sit two seam inside first pitch. And we were able to go and get it, even though it was off the plate. So we really. <laughs> Needed to swing first pitch there and try to do some damage because we need momentum desperately. Hit a couple home runs on balls outside the zone this game. There were good swings, granted. Uh, but the Devers at bat, he went two seam inside a lot until two strikes. So that's why I decided on to sit on that pitch specifically. And he doesn't actually go to the righty versus Judge, which I don't know if I would have done. I guess it's a tough call since Alvarado just gave up a bomb. But now I get two at-bats in a row with an advantage attribute-wise. People typically throw fork balls with two strikes with Raleigh, so I'm going to try to keep a slow bat. He's thrown four sinkers in a row. All right. And once again, we are not going to get caught looking. That's just disgusting. <laughs> Maybe we need to get off of that adjustment. Literally from the second I decided I wasn't going to strike out looking anymore, he has thrown balls in two strike counts like every time. Dude has a microphone that leads from my house to his house, I think. That's just gross. It's okay. Trying really hard to lay off the slider inside here. That gets through nice. We didn't strike out looking. Don't get thrown out at first. <laughs> All right, I think we sit sinker in here right on right as well. Just sit on it first pitch, try to do some damage. And he throws a sweep, sweep and slider away. Good stuff. Mm, just off again. This is such a frustrating game. So many swings with good timing with my PCI. Just a little bit off of the ball. Good inning, though. The Jordan home run carrying us. Let's see if we can get one more inning out of Burns. I'm going to warm up a righty as well. Just in case we have to get off of Corbin. I haven't thrown this front door curve yet. Let's just try it. Nice. Yeah, that's off the plate. I keep thinking eventually he's not going to be ready for it, but he's been ready for it. That's why I wanted it way off the plate, though, so even if he's ready, he doesn't do too much damage on it. This is Schwarber off the bench. Trying to stay away from the front door sinker to lefties low and in and try to work stuff off of that. Because like I said, there was a period, point in the game where I threw that first pitch to a lefty like three or four times in a row. Um, I'm also going to try to float this change up out. Hopefully he's thinking about that cutter up in a way. 
feel like I should probably throw it now, though. Hmm. Great adjustment, man. This is turning into a heck of a game. He said, nope, get out of here with that pitch. He's hitting... He has hit super, super well these last two or three innings specifically. I'm going to stick with Corbin through the next three at-bats, I think. He was late side of good there. Come on, Aaron. Just too slow. Maybe I can't. I just wanted to get through the Dansby at bat, I suppose. We'll probably have to make a move to a lefty with Ortiz or walk him. He's super early there. JD, come on. Gold shield. Oh, I don't know if he gets there with the silver defense. That was sketchy. <laughs> All right, so we have a couple options here. Walking Ortiz or bringing in a lefty. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of walking in general, and we're looking at lefty cap lefty, so bringing in the lefty is good here. Um, it's possible he's platooning Ortiz, though, or just has a first baseman he can go to. So we'll see what he does. I'm also going to go infield in. I think it's relatively important that I maintain the lead here. This is a bit debatable because we're the home team, and being tied is better for us than it is for him. So you could make the argument to just give up the run and get into a tie game, but I really want to try to keep the lead since we have no momentum. Didn't get a perfect throw with Judge here, so he's probably safe. Dang. Great inning, man. Ties it up. 5-5. Five, five. The video did indeed go longer than 15 minutes, so this is a dub all around. Not a ton of reps with Mantiply yet, but obviously his control is amazing. He's got the 125 walks per nine. I think he set the record for like most appearances or innings without walking somebody out of the bullpen <laughs> this year, so that's pretty cool. All right, we have ourselves quite a game here. He's going to do little. Do I want to make a move away from Jimenez here? Bottom seven. I think I don't. I think I'll let Andres hit. I don't want to pigeonhole myself into a situation where I can't make this move later in the game. Like in the ninth. And also, I want to keep Jimenez's defense on the field. Because someone I would pinch hit with would probably be Machado. So because we're the home team, having the better defense, since we're technically ahead by a half an inning here, is probably good for us. We'll just take the L this at bat. It's a huge take. What does he throw us here? Man, another amazing swing just over the top. I'm getting so frustrated with my mechanics, dude. This has uh, been a game where... I'll go Machado off the bench, probably. This has been a game where if my aim was just a little bit better, I would have had, like, five-plus perfects. But sometimes you have games like this, I guess. Mm, 3 1. What am I looking for here? Probably just a fastball. Alright, I will take my walk. I don't think I'm going to pinch run either. Not until he gets to second base, at least. If I pinch run and then hit into a double play, it's really awkward. Dude, his nibble central with Doolittle. Can we get something over the middle? <sighs> At least he booted it a little bit. Oh, and he missed the throw. Oh, no. Okay, this is a gigantic at bat. We have to take advantage of that. That was that should have been a double play, and now we can hit a three-run bomb. And I think we just did. Wow, what a turn of events. Definitely unlucky that he booted it at third, but he still should have been able to get one out there. But yeah, we're obviously swinging first pitch there. <laughs> we have to try our hardest to capitalize on that immediately for the momentum. 
And luckily, he also threw us a cookie of a pitch, which could have been a product of his frustration. And immediately after that error, his accuracy with his pitches has been way worse, too. Just changes everything. Jordan could be the MVP here with another bomb, I suppose. I think that's gone. Man, Jordan is so good. <laughs> as long as nobody hits the ball to him. Super good. What a turn of events this inning. I can't believe we just put up a five spot after he just had the inning he had. Insane back and forth. Bit of a mistake from him too. Again, going to a right-handed pitcher through this part of the lineup. And maybe the mistake was amplified or made possible by him going Doolittle first uh, to start this inning. Maybe he didn't have another lefty to go to. And for those of you wondering, since I'm hitting against O'Day, <laughs> I got asked this on stream the other night. No, he doesn't tip his pitches anymore. They patched it last year. And because they patched it, I'll tell you the reason he tipped his pitches is because he would hold the ball in his hand and then bring it up to his glove, and you could see the grip on the pitch. Whereas when they patched it, they just made the ball in his glove, so all he does is bring his hand, empty hand up to the glove. Uh, which was information I definitely did not want to share last year. <laughs> I'm glad they patched it, though. That stuff sucks for the game. All right. This is the counter. To, this is what he... What am I trying to say? A lefty's good here out of the pin for us. We're looking at lefty Castellanos lefty. He's hitting super well, though, again. I mean, this game's definitely not over, right? With a five-run lead, we could look at pitching around Nick here, too. Set up the double play since his base running, his him being on base individually doesn't really hurt us. So we could just throw a bunch of balls to sit bat and see if we can get a free out. Yeah, he's being hyper aggressive. Nice. That was below the zone, so even though he smoked it, I'd say I deserve the out. Good stuff. Now he can pitch to Seager more aptly. I don't even know if that's the right word. I really like Soto a lot, man. I feel like you can do a lot with his pitch mix, and his release is pretty good. All right, we're going to throw the sinker down here, see if we can get him to chase it. We do, but he flails it into the outfield. Ugh, that's disgusting. Can't be having many of those when I'm trying to close this game out very late. Miggy's slow enough, though, that if he puts another one on the ground, we get out of here easily. So we're trying to throw things that he would roll over on. Change-ups away. Sinkers below the zone. The change-up away is the one that works. Easy-peasy inning for Soto. And we are going to have at least a five-run lead going into the ninth. And I think we'll just go with probably a someone low leverage to start. I think Williams is fine. We'll just go with Devin Williams. Probably over overthinking it. If he rallies and we have to make another decision bullpen-wise, that's going to be way more important than the one we make now. He really likes that pitch. O'Day just throws so slow that I can see everything he throws for a really long time, pretty much. Same thing with Blackburn, I guess. We didn't do too well against him, though. Contreras having a rare off day over three. That's just... What can you do? It's the perfect location. And 
I've scored 10 runs and I feel like I have hit terrible the entire game. You guys ever have games like that? <laughs> I feel like I really haven't played well yet. We have double digit runs. The error into the three run bomb obviously helps things. Jimenez doing good though. I'm going to push it to third here if I can. This is worth the risk. Uh, to try to get this run in. He perfect throwed us. They literally always perfect throw, man. That's the only way I'm out. <laughs> Unbelievable. I think that's worth the risk there, especially up five. If we can get him in a position where he has to go infield in there, it's pretty good. And I thought I was fast enough to get there. Going to cost us a run, though, because we just hit a double. Feels bad. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't the right play. Who knows? I was only out with a perfect throw, and he did it, so... What can you do? He's got to take a day out, probably. He's one out away from getting out of the inning, so he probably thinks he can just push it a little longer, but I think we've been crushing the ball pretty well here. 30 pitches for him, too. Yeah, it's just... You just leave him in way too long, man. Maybe he doesn't have other options and or he doesn't want to burn them in a five-run game. But i just seen way too much O'Day the last two innings. Ellie going deep. Love the card, man. That is not quite gone. That's okay. We're up seven going into the ninth. Somehow scored 12 this game. <laughs> Crazy. And hopefully Devin can just get it done so we don't have to burn another bullpen arm. We will warm one up though. Assuming Devin gets rocked, we probably want a high leverage guy after, so we'll go with Lopez. Pretty good performance from the budget squad though. The all 15k and under squad putting up t 12 runs offensively. Corbin had a pretty good outing, too, until that one inning. My approach pitching with Devin Williams, honestly, pretty often, is just trying to work the changeup and cutter a lot until two strikes and then just throwing tons of screwballs with two strikes because it's the hardest pitch to hit that he throws for sure, but he also is so poor with his location on it that I try to save it till two strikes where... Even if I throw it for a ball, sometimes they're inclined to still swing at it because they're behind in the count. So that's generally how I work with Devin. I still think he's one of the best relievers in the game. I use him a lot in high leverage spots. This is not one of those times, though. Two down here. Looking like we're going to cruise through the ninth and get the seven run W. One more out to go, Dansby Swanson. We scored 10 of our 12 runs in the last four innings. Good stuff. And that is a GG from Devin. So I'm glad I re-recorded this. The last one was like 15 minutes long. I decided not to post it. This gameplay was way better. Jordan 3 for 4 with 3 home runs. <laughs> Ellie 2 for 5 with a bomb. Jimenez had a bomb. Devers had a bomb. Good, good stuff, man. Our opponent definitely didn't have the best squad. You know, facing guys like Doolittle doesn't happen too often these days. So uh, we got a bit lucky in that sense. We didn't have to face all the goons. But decent gameplay all around. Personally, don't feel like I played too well. But we got the win. We're into the 800s. We're at 814 now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys learned something. Uh, let me know if any of these guys on this budget squad are on your mainstay squad. Uh, take care. We'll see you guys next time.